What really happened to Brian Highland? Brian Highland's puppy Love Pop virtually defined the sound and sensibility of bubblegum during the pre-Beatles era. In the years after his teen idol stature faded, he enjoyed a creative renaissance, releasing a series of underrated country-inspired efforts and even making a brief return to the pop charts. Born November 12, 1943, in Brooklyn, NY, Highland studied guitar and clarinet while singing in his church choir. At 14 he co-founded a harmony group dubbed the Delphies, which cut a demo they shopped to various New York City record labels. Highland ultimately signed as a solo artist to Cap Records, and in late 1959 issued his debut single, Rosemary. For the follow-up, Four Little Heels the label paired him with the brill-building songwriting duo of Lee Pockris and Paul Vance, and when the single proved a minor hit, Pockris and Vance set to work on the follow-up. The resulting itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini topped the Billboard pop charts in the summer of 1960, vaulting the 16-year-old to teen heartthrob status. After a move to ABC Records, Highland partnered with the songwriting and production tandem of Gary Geld and Peter Uttle for the hits Let Me Belong to You and It'll Never Stop Wanting You. With 1962's Sealed with a Kiss, a top five entry on both sides of the Atlantic, Highland sealed his reputation as a paragon of youthful innocence and first kiss romance, perfectly capturing the adolescent zeitgeist in the months leading up to Beatlemania. With 1962's Top 30 hit Warmed Over Kisses, Highland introduced elements of country music into his sound an approach he explored on singles including I May Not Live to See Tomorrow and I Am Afraid to Go Home and culminating with the 1964 LP Country Meets Folk. While Highland's music clearly anticipated the folk rock and country rock that would blossom in the years to follow, he seemed hopelessly out of touch in contrast to the British Invasion Act's now dominating pop radio, and his commercial fortunes rapidly dwindled. Highland nevertheless forged on, teaming with producer Snuff Garrett and famed session men J.J. Kale and Leon Russell to score a pair of surprise top 30 hits. The Joker went wild and run, run, look and see. Subsequent efforts including Get the Message and Holiday for Clowns barely charted, however, and with 1969 Stay and Love Me All Summer, Highland shifted gears yet again creating a melancholy yet luminous sunshine pop sound of remarkable maturity. A year later, he resurfaced on the Uni label with a self-titled LP produced by Del Shannon. With Gypsy Woman, a cover of The Impression's 1961 R&B hit, Highland scored his final top five hit, and while his rendition of Jackie Wilson's Lonely Teardrops also proved a minor chart effort, Originals like Mail Order Gun failed to earn the attention they deserved. Despite the success of Gypsy Woman, Uni dropped Highland from its roster and he spent much of the decade without a record deal, instead of touring the US and Europe. In 1975, ABC's British division reissued Sealed with a Kiss, and it cracked the UK Top 10. Two years later Highland and his family settled in New Orleans and in 1979 the private stock label issued in a state of Bayou, which spotlighted his collaboration with the famed Crescent City composer and producer Alan Toussaint. Highland continued his active touring schedule in the decades to follow, often performing with Sun Body on drums. That's what really happened to him.